Okay, for honors pre-calc today, this is just a quick review video of what we did in class because unfortunately during class my video failed. So uh, here is our first step in proving proof by induction. We set n equal to 1. We make sure that it works for n equals 1. And then we set n equal to k. And the third step is n equals k plus 1. If you haven't learned this yet, you need to go back and watch the other video. This is just a quick review of how you do proof by induction. All right, so here's a typical question. Uh, we're asked to prove that this is true by induction. I mentioned that induction versus deduction. On induction, you start with a true statement and then you show that it's true, as opposed to deduction is where you deduce by taking little pieces of evidence, bringing it to an end and getting the final conclusion. Uh, induction is where you start with that correct statement and then you go from there. So uh, here we go. I'm starting by proving that n equals 1. I stick in 1 into this formula. When I put a 1 here, I generate that term, which is 1. Since that's the first and only term, this whole side is a list of terms and it's just a 1 then. If I had put in a 2, for instance, I'd have 4 times 2 is 8 minus 3 is 5. It would have generated the second term and I would have known that it was 1 plus 5. All right, so when I put in a 1, the left side became 1. The right side also simplifies to 1 equals 1. Then the n equals k step is just taking this equation and sticking k in it. It's that easy. So here it is. Uh, and then uh, the next step is this step right here, the one that I started writing in black here, n equals k plus 1. That's sticking in a k plus 1 into the equation. Now you note that this is the beginning part is exactly the same as it was right here. It's all identically the same. But then we add this term. It's the last term is now we're putting in a k plus 1 where there used to just be a k. And so our new term that we add to our sequence list is that one. And then the right hand side you just take k and replace it with k plus 1. And this k and replace it with k plus 1. So all said and done, that's the part where we'd expect you to know how to do that, set that up. This part is kind of going above and beyond where you actually are replacing this with this. I better use a different color here. Uh, that 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus dot 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 4k minus 3. That was defined earlier, right up here, as being equal to k times 2k minus 1. So we replaced it with k times 2k minus 1. And I show the work for the algebra here. It's a lot of difficult work. At the end, it requires some, you know, multiplying it all out, factoring this, and then this 1 gets replaced with a 2 minus 1, which is true, of course, but it's hard to see that you'd want to do that. The reason you'd want to do that is we knew from looking at the answer over here that we needed a 2 times parentheses k plus 1 minus 1, that and that are necessary in order to get that. So final answer, this is now equal to this, this whole thing. And that has proven our result by induction. All right, so there's an example of a proof by induction. Uh, this was a good problem uh, to practice for the final because, not the final, sorry, for the test chapter nine uh, on sequence and series. If I start with this series of 2 and then 10 and then 18, it looks like we're adding 8 each time. I asked them to figure out the 14th term. We did that here using this formula, a sub n equals a plus n minus 1 times d. And then I stuck in all the proper numbers. n is 14 because we have 14th term. Uh, and 8 is our common difference. And our a was 2. And then you multiply it all out and you get 108. Sorry, 106. So... The 106 is our 14th term. Now we're adding up from 2 all the way up through the 14th term, which is 106. What do they all add up to? The final answer is I stick it into my sum formula, which is this one. The bigger number is here. The smaller number is here. When I add those together, I get 108. And 14 over 2 is 7. 7 times 108 is my final answer. 756 is my total. So there is my grand total for, that's an example of a, a really good sequence question that kind of sums it all up.
<sighs> sums it all up. Get it? This is a sum problem. This is a uh, series question where you use sigma, and I have generated the first four terms by sticking in numbers. Like, for instance, you start with a 1, then you put in a 2 and a 3, and then you end with a 4. And you get these four terms. I'll, get an, I'll show you. Let's say I put in a 1 right here. I get 1 times 3 is 3 plus 5 is 8. That's why there's an 8 here. All right, so then I found those four terms and I added them all up. Could I have used this formula? I absolutely could have, and then I showed how it would have still come out to 50. Two, plus, two times 15, which is, or sorry, 25, which is what 8 plus 17 is. Two times 25 makes 50. All right, so last thing I told them was, here is a quick reminder on uh, adding up infinite series and the only way you can add up an infinite series is if you use this formula for s sub infinity. It only works for geometric, and the geometric kind is where you're multiplying by something each time, and your r has to be less than 1. In this case, we're multiplying by 1 half each time. I can tell that by taking this divided by this, and I get 1 half. And then I realize, oh, so my r is 2, so I put that here. My a, my starting amount, was 1 eighth, so I put that here. And 1 minus a half gives me a half. 8 divided, 1 eighth divided by 1 half is 2 eighths, which is 1 fourth. This infinite series would add up to 1 fourth. There's a really quick summary of what we did today in honors pre-calc. Uh, and tomorrow is a full review day for the Chapter 9 test. And that's all I have for you for today.